morning. You had your breakfast? Is it okay? Okay, because today we'll be talking about something about leadership also, but a bit more technical. So I need every one of you to really listen up. So uh, I would like, first of all, to thank you to, to thank Daryl for bringing me here again. Uh, Daryl and I go a long way back. We've been together in the first, uh, second UPS Ambassador Training in Long Penn, and we've been also together in the first Looking Beyond Disaster in Christchurch, New Zealand. So thank you, Daryl, for bringing me here, and it's been an honor to be in front of you, the cadets, because they say that the, um, the society, the structure of society are held by those that has the discipline to do it. And of all the schools that I've been into, the only schools that I'm really proud to talk about are the two schools with discipline. One is PMA and the other is MAA. I've been here five years ago. So let's start. So if any of you are wondering what I do in life, uh, right after college, I, as Daryl said, I work with the presidential office under the PNA administration. Um, I created the special projects of the president. We went around the Philippines to tap the grassroots organizations and empower them to empower the grassroots people. And after, right after that, um, in December, I started my own company with two partners. And we basically do branding and management for corporations and individuals. And if you want to know what's branding and management, basically, we make them look better. And for companies, for corporations, we make them, we, we make people love them. We make people buy their products. And for individuals, probably politicians, we make them gain more votes. But don't worry, we choose our clients well. So, next, uh, can I have a clicker? So basically, we'll be talking about branding and leadership. So how does branding and leadership go together? And how can it help or knowledge of it can help you with your action plans? But before that, why do we need to have action plans? Why do we need to create that in certain conferences in uh, convergence of minds like this? Why do we need to create action or plan of action? Why do we need to act now? What's the problem? So if I ask you, do you watch news? Do you watch news? Are you allowed to watch news here in the app? What? Newspaper, okay, that's, that's news. So, whenever you watch news, which is greater, good news or bad news? Good news? How about bad news? So, what? So, when I'm saying it's bad news, why bad news? Is it? Um, ample, if we, if we just qualify it, is it right to say that our world is not that good as of now, as of the moment, with all the conflicts happening? Or let's just rephrase it. Is it good to, is it ample to tell that our world can be better? So that's why we need to have action plans. Because, the, as Chris has discussed earlier, leadership is about bringing vision into reality. But now I'll be talking about bringing ideas into reality. But first, let's discuss what's an idea. Because leadership is a combination of what's inside, what's in your head, what's in your heart, what's in your, what's your ideas, and what is outside. How do you translate those ideas into action? How do you make those action, uh, ideas meaningful to others? How do you make and create those ideas to change the lives of other people. So, this is your brain. Who among you here doesn't have a brain? Oh, Daryl, you're not qualified to sit here. This lecture is for people with brain. <laughs> so, most of you are qualified. Okay, that's good. That's a good start. So, idea emanates from the brain. So, you think with your brain, you create ideas, you amalgamate different facts and figures into your brain and create concepts, create ideas. So what's the problem with ideas? Have you had a special someone? Think of that special someone now. Think, uh, since this is mostly boys, think about how you can see her smile, how she looks into your eyes. 
And you can close your eyes if you want. And think, when is the first moment you knew that she's the one? Think of that moment. And let me ask you, what if, because that's an idea, you have an idea that you love her and you have that, an idea that you want to be with her. So think of that moment, that idea. What happens if you don't translate those ideas into action? What if you just love her with your mind and not with your heart and that actions? What if you didn't translate those, that, that love, that idea of love into action? What will happen? Nothing. And in Filipino, I will teach our foreign guests. If you have, if you love someone and you cannot tell her or express to her that you love her, we call that torpe. So you have a Filipino word, and tell everybody, I'm not torpe. Are there a people torpe? Again? No, sir. You know, I, I'm with my cousin today, and uh, Luigi. And I have one bad news and two good news for her. You want to start with the bad news first. Bad news is she's taken. The good news is she's taken by a Maa Bradley. And currently a seaman. So she's everybody's first time to go here. So if you don't translate those ideas, the idea of love, the concept of love into action, then someone probably will sweep her off her feet and take it from take her from you. So that's the reality. If you don't translate ideas into reality, then it will not become reality. That's the very simple logic. But in terms of ideas, have you heard the have you heard the statement thinking outside the box? Uh, there, there's been so many discussions about thinking outside the box. But the problem with the discussions of thinking outside the box is that they don't focus on the box. How can you think outside the box if you don't know the box? So today I will be discussing this part. This part. What is what is within the box? What is within that box? So what is your box? We all have our boxes in our lives, and let me let us ask ourselves now: What is our box? What's inside our box? Inside our box is our comfort zone. So we operate within those boxes, within uh, on the things that is in that box. So the box is also a restriction to us. I know my people knows a lot about restrictions. You live by the rules. And then, and you know, we love rules. You love rules? Really? You, love, you should love the rules. Because without rules, we don't have anything to break. We love rules because we love to break them, right? <laughs> because they say, according to a theory, whenever you break rules, you became more, became more creative. You become more creative. And then the box is, some, is a restriction to our mind. We put restrictions so that we can become more creative. For example, I want you to define love. That's the only instruction. Define love. Now the second instruction is define love in five words. So I realize that when I say the first instruction to define love, people are like dumbfounded, thinking, thinking, thinking. And then when I say define love in five words, some of you gave an answer. So that's giving a box. That's putting a box on our mind. Define love, no box, anything. You can write whole essays about it. But when I give restriction, to define it in five words. You become more creative. You thought of the best words to describe it. So that's having a box. That's loving your box. And then the thing with um, putting a box on your brain or on your ideas is that once you become more creative, you can feel the edge of the box. And then you can break and push through that box. And then after that, you can create another box, a bigger box, a better box. And that is growth. 
and that is thinking outside the box to create another and bigger box. And after that, let's watch a video. Can you play Facebook Stories? Uh, by the background of this video, who among you here walks to school? <laughs> Every day. With all the information, left, right, left, right, right? Some of us, some of us ride far to school, but they know that in the southern Philippines there are children who swim to school. How many minutes? Five minutes? 30 minutes? No, two hours. Going to school and going back to school, that's four hours a day. So they swim to school because they live in a remote island. And this is how we try to address the problem. Can we turn the lights? when they were going to school. That story really touched me. So I have dated my Facebook status and one of my friends challenged me. It made me think we should do something about it. So we started a mini fundraising campaign and we raised enough money to buy them a boat. But uh, one thing that we didn't realize in the afternoon when it's no time, a boat is uh, kind of useless. You can't just give whatever you think they need. You have to really find out what their needs are. So it's really a learning process and it's becoming sort of a relationship. <laughs> Social media has helped us connect with places that face challenges that we've never even heard of. Now we're looking at a holistic way on how to help them by helping the high school graduates secure some scholarships from the State College of Marine Science and Technology to get out of poverty and improve the quality of life in the community. By building them a boat, we never realized that they would create a ripple effect to understand each other and a relationship with them. Uh, one of the executives of Facebook, one of the co-founders of Facebook, Adorno of Mark Zuckerberg, went to Zamboanga to film them, to shoot that and, and present it as one of the, of the first Facebook stories. So, who among you here can post a status update on Facebook? No one? Or do you think it's a stupid question to ask? Because everyone can do it. Is it part of your box to post a status update on Facebook? Can you do it? Is it part of your current box? No? Of course, yes, because you can you are the out uh, generation is very techy right now. And we are so busy most of the time to think outside the box that we don't realize that the tools we need are within our box. And Jay Haboneta or our partners in Yellow Boat, knew um, when when he heard of the story, he doesn't have any money. 
to give. He doesn't have any resources to build a boat for them. But he looked within his box and, and said, I can share this story. It's within my box to share and post a status and share to the world this story of these little kids swim to school. And he did that. And from there, it started like a wildfire. Many people donated, many people uh, pitched in. And as of the moment, in the five year seasons of the Yellow Boats of Hope Foundation, we were able to give 4,000 boats to more than 48 communities around the Philippines. And not only boats, we were also able to, because as uh, that, that instance, we try to push outside the box. So just aside from just giving votes, we try to learn the needs of the community. And per need, we're up to that. So some communities, they have um, very rough seas, so boat is, a boat is not really safe for children. So we created schools. We have created over eight school buildings around the Philippines also. And we are, we have one bridge. We created one bridge because the distance is not that far. So instead of giving them boats, we created a bridge for so that children will not get wet going to school. So th that's one instance of thinking within your box, having the tools within that box and trying to use that to go outside the box and create positive change. So that's one example. But once you have the idea, once you can think outside the box, once you love your box, you embrace your box, what's next? So this is the part between the two factors of leadership, what is inside and what is outside. That's in between. How do you translate vision into reality? How do you translate ideas into actions? If you have that, uh, uh, that, uh, that idea, how do, you, uh, how do you download that to people? Most of the action plans I've seen, many of them are successful, many of them are also failures. Why do action plans fail? Because, not because that it's, it's not a good idea, but because they fail to inspire people. And sustainability of any, of any project is dependent on how people will react to it. Because you cannot do anything alone. You cannot change the world alone. It's a reality. It's a reality. You, cannot, you cannot affect much change without first affecting the hearts and minds of people. What is the UNESCO free? Since war began in the minds of men, the defenses of peace must it is in the mind that the defenses of peace must be constructed. So it all starts here. And if you cannot inspire what is here, you cannot inspire action. And if you cannot inspire action, you cannot inspire positive change. So the question is how do you download that idea, that concept, into the hearts and minds of people, of individuals who will, who can and will work for you? One thing we need to, one concept we need to keep in mind always, it's human nature. People don't like to be told what to do. When your parents say, okay, get up at 5 a.m. Or probably your superiors here in Ma'ab. Okay, let's get up at 5 a.m. So because we have a conference to attend at 8 a.m. So the first reaction of our body is, ah, it's weekend, Sunday. I don't want to get up early. So that's the first reaction of that's the first reaction of our human nature because we want to be the own captains of our lives. So how do you translate? How do you download your idea to other people if that is the new basic human nature? You sell your idea because once you sell your idea and people buy your idea, it's no longer your idea; it's also their idea. And the basic concept of people don't like to do what they don't like to be told what to do is gone because it's their idea they embrace that idea but how do you sell that idea simple it's like selling a product how do you sell your love to a girl how do you package your love to a girl how do you send her flowers you create uh, you create actions that determines or that emanates the concept of love. But the problem is, when selling something, there are so many other ideas out there, especially with the onset of Facebook and other social media handles. There are so many ideas out there that it's kind of confusing. Have you ever felt that 
you want to do so many things and because of that you have done nothing have you ever, ever felt that situation when there's this um this feeling inside of you the burning passion to do many things but the result of that is you haven't done anything you see many heads nodding there's a problem for our generation the generation y and z we are so empowered to do many things that it made us do little so that that's the we need to first define what is your idea because many people if they have an idea oh they try to market it they try to sell it right away but when time comes and then he, he or she is faced with the with the opposition or with the other obstacles it moves them to think oh is, it, is this really what i want so first make the idea your idea you should be passionate about it it should be close to your heart not just any idea it should be your idea it's yours take ownership of it and then be very specific and later we'll be talking about how to be specific so those are different ideas but if you put a mark on your idea it will stand out among other ideas so branding what is branding branding basically is a mark placed in an animal for identification so you know um in other countries where there are many cows a herd of cows you put brand because most of them most of those cows are uh, have different owners so they put a brand for x or y or probably a certain mark to make sure that even though they mix up you can still identify which is yours so it's a mark place so that's the origin of branding but in business branding is defined as the expression of the essential truth or value of something it is communication of characteristics values and attributes that clarify what this something is and is not what is your idea what are the parts of your idea what are the factors that is not part of your idea it should be well defined if you will create something that you want to change the world with you should be very very clear and very very specific of it uh, one thing to do one very good question to ask yourself whenever you're creating a brand for your idea is what do i want the world to remember about me or about this idea so that is your brand and when you when you can answer that you can already create and package your idea so that it can be sellable to the mass majority so let's watch another video what's your back you have a back are you are you being each the back no is it good is it made of plastic no but it's durable so there is one individual before 20 years ago who go to school with a plastic bag so that's about the red stripe bag plastic bag
That's Band 940. Basically, what type of Band 940 is a, it's a social enterprise, by the way. Whenever you buy one bag from us, another bag will be given to a needy kid. So that's the buy one, give one concept. And as of the moment, for the, our three years of existence, we have given over 8,000 bags to our 63 communities across the Philippines. And the bags, there, there's also school supplies there. So how do, how do we came about with these ideas? What's the start? The start is, there's a need. We identified a need. And according to the DepEx statistics, many kids in elementary drop out because of two factors. One, inaccessible school. Number two, lack of proper school supplies. So those are the needs, those two needs, specific needs. We don't plan to do everything because we know we have limited resources. So we focus on those two needs. The other ones are focused on giving equality access to education by giving them, by giving the kids a proper way to go to school, not being wet and not walking on water. Bag 94P focus on the other one, providing school supplies. So we try to address problems very specifically by choosing the problems specifically. So that's one great way to have a sustainable action plan. Choose a specific problem and make that problem your problem also, but not in a negative way. Make it something for you to think within your box. Choose a tool and then go beyond your box. And I just want to uh, give a story. Uh, about a month ago, I was given an opportunity to present with the heads of the different banks in the Philippines. They told me, okay, you give a three minute pitch, exactly three minutes. No, no more time, just three minutes. Because the Ayalas and the other executives of BPI, Bank of the Philippine Islands were there. And then they have read really a um, very limited time. Okay, three minutes. I pitched Bank 940 because we are applying for a scale-up process. We are planning to have more designs. And we need money for that. So I pitched for three minutes, exactly three minutes. Okay, and then after that, I was thinking, oh, I think I blew it off. Because I don't, I don't know if they get the concept. But since Bag 943 has a very good branding, it has a good story, it tracks a specific problem, and it has an action plan that is very specific, and we have the data for that. Uh, with our, all our communities, we have measured the absence rate and the grades of the students before we give the bag, and then after we give the bags. So the absence rate dropped for about 36%, and the grades increased for 48%. So that's a measure just after one quarter of giving the bags and the books. So that's a specific measure that was given to the executives. So after my presentation, I was walking out of the door and then one executive tapped me and he said to me, how much do you need for that scale up? And I said, I said uh, just about 300,000 pesos. And he said, okay, you got it. It's like that. And I was like, I should have said one million. <laughs> No, just kidding. So that's it. it's enough. 300,000 is enough. So we are now on our scale up process with Bagman 4P. And that's one of the many businesses we handle, aside from the profit business, we have the branding and management. So basically, that's it. Be specific. Many action plans fail because they try to, to um, save the world all, uh, just in one big project. You can, you can only tackle the problems of our society effectively if you can tackle the root causes of that. And the root causes are very specific problems. And then that's the thing you need to identify. Once you know that, you know your problem, you know their problem, you can think outside the box. So this is the action plan equation. There's a problem. There's a need that needs to be addressed. Plus the solution. That's where you come in. What's your solution? What's your, what's your idea for a solution? And then, positive change. But before positive change, you need to sell that idea first to the mass market because that will make it sustainable. And 
I will already give the talk about um, having many leaders. I just need want to give example because he already talked about it, JC, about um, downloading your um, your leadership abilities to other people, training them to be leaders. But I would like to give you a story. Um, when I was in UP's ambassador number two, my action plan is to create UNESCO clubs all over the Philippines. Because at that time, the opportunities, the international opportunities, and the other stuff that go with it are only limited to the people of the Imperial Manila. So whenever you go to the conference, oh, you can see the same people, same Filipinos. Because the problem before is that those opportunities are not being downloaded to the provinces, to the grassroots in the provinces. So my actual plan is to create many UNESCO clubs in the province at that time. And I'm glad to report to Daryl and to all of you that we have created over 60 UNESCO clubs across the Philippines. And many are now accessing those opportunities and we're glad to create more. And with that, we also, because as the leadership succession is also concerned, um, I'm very proud of my members, of our members, because last year I relinquished my my job as a board member of UNESCO clubs in the Philippines and they are doing better now even without me and that is success success rate uh, how does that's how you measure success if you can leave them alone so that you can do other things and then they do they, and then they do better than you so that's the that's a great news for what like report so basically that's branding and to end the talk I would like to ask to you again the first question I ask you. What do you think uh, whenever you have whenever you hear news or read news, which is bad which is greater? Good news or bad news? As of now you say it's bad news. But probably this is YPA thirteen. Probably in YPA um, seven hundred and eighty three. That's many, many years from now, if there's still YPA. Another speaker will again talk to a new generation of future leaders. And then he might ask you the same question I asked you before. Whenever you hear good news, whenever you hear news, which is greater, good news or bad news, what answer would you like them to give the speaker? Good news or bad news? Again? Good news because if they say bad news, or either way, if they say good news or bad news, it will certainly reflect on what we need today. Because the present is only affected by the past. And if that time is the present, certainly their past is us. So we have the chance, we have a very, very good chance to affect the future. We have a very, very good chance to affect the way they answer during that time. And it's up for us, it's up for grabs today. So the only thing we need to do is idea and then reality. Bridge the gap between those two and we will change the world. Thank you. Anyway, if you have any questions or you want to volunteer for our future work, you can contact me on my social media handles. That's at all of us. It's for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you. Are there, are there any uh, questions for AI? Please stay there. Questions, violent reactions. Or are we gonna the end? Yes. yes, Chris. <laughs> okay, I would really like to commend uh Kuya AR, I call him Kuya AR because we were together in the National Association of UNESCO Clubs in the Philippines because he told me that the action plan was to create opportunities for all the provinces to have their own UNESCO clubs. And I'm proud to say that I'm one of the products of that action plan. So really, it is a vision that became to reality. So thank you so much, Kuya Thank you, Kuya JC. So any more questions? Yes? Many. Actually, the last thing we think about in every project is funding. Because if you have that idea and you package that idea well, you can create. I don't know. Ne we never had any problems with funding. Are you registered? Do you have legal? Yes, we have legal. But we started illegally, not illegally. 
Now, we started without a legal entity. But as time passes by, because you cannot just start if um, it's a process actually. You start very little. Oh, actually, actually, that's one thing. You start very little. Very little. Because once you start very big, it's, it's really hard to sustain that. So we start very little, not yet registered. And as we go along the way, we um, we try to register and we, we grew. We grew. And that's part of the process. So with, in terms of funding, I think this is my belief. This I, I don't know what, what you... Funding is the last thing you should think of. As long as you have that idea, you believe on that idea, that's a great start. You should know and believe and identify that idea first. Because many organizations fail because they fail to do the very first thing. I asked the question of to, uh, not to police you, but it's just that <laughs> I have an organization that's existing for six years, but it's just registered with Gone and Kelsen. So I think it's forward to have. Oh, yeah, I think since it's six years, I think it's about time to register yeah. inside. And I'm sorry, I don't worry, I don't feel police. I feel inspired okay. looking at me. Yes, ma'am? Thank you very much for that very commendable presentation. And the speaking of uh, UNESCO clubs, um, this reminded me that uh, we had the established map in Paeti, a student club. And this Paeti student club has been accredited by UNESCO. So it is the first uh, accredited uh, uh, student club at Maam by UNESCO. And also I remember because uh, it's published at the uh, Paedi publication, um, uh, Paedi Paedi publication, the uh, first president of the uh, that UNESCO accredited Paedi club, student club, is uh, from Maam. He is uh, he is already an alumni, alumnus, um, first class senior new man. And then uh, we also uh, have this uh, BPSU, that's Bataan Peninsula State University, um, by Epi Student Club, and that was also accredited by UNESCO. And then in, the, in April 24 to uh, 25, here at the MAP campus, we have, of course, uh, Professor Dr. Daryl Master Razor as our guest of honor and speaker because he was formerly the regional advisor of UNESCO. And uh, from there, uh, that we have learned a lot from UNESCO through uh, Professor Daryl Mazur. Mazur. That's why I would like really to acknowledge and really thank uh, Professor Mazur for uh, making it uh, realize or making it happen. Here. And by the way, Ma'am is one of our, actually the very, very first responder to our call because after we came from Cambodia, just two weeks, she made the Paepi accredited. So that's when we went here five years ago. Yeah, that's the first, that's the first accreditation. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I, that I would like uh, to share with you that everything can be re realized, but you have to take action in the most cost-effective, fastest, and efficient means. And with the support of our friends, like uh, you have heard him, that's why uh, you are an instrument of God. And uh, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've uh, watched the uh, video presentation. It really touched my heart. And it is precisely the reason why I wanted all our students to be here, to be listening with the foreign peace ambassador, with the Filipino peace ambassador, because I know Admiral Santos would, uh, would like to um, produce not just ordinary uh, seafarer, but a gentleman and an officer with a heart and um, he would like you to uh, promote world peace because you will be traveling around the world and as an ambassador not only of Maa but the entire Philippines. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning, everyone. I really want to commend this guy. <laughs> he is an inspirational speaker. This is one reason why I would like to always go with the younger ones for us to be continually sp inspired and AR actually I met him way back in NICE during our NICE in Pansol Laguna and after that I also we also in our school we had two UNESCO clubs uh, registered then our 
uh, the student whom I am with during the Laguna Nice is now the president of UNESCO. So I'm very proud. You are an inspiration to all of us this morning, this particular Sunday morning. And I just hope we will be able to develop a lot of ARs in the Philippines. And not only in the Philippines, but throughout the world. Thank you, AR. I hope you will develop ARs. I hope you develop better ARs. So any more questions? Okay, I'll let you know. Oh, no. Thank you. Uh, so I think uh, you can see why he's a youth peace ambassador. Yes? Yes. Deserving of a title. And uh, you can also see you have linkages between youth and uh, development of capacity. And uh, thinking back in 2011, in March, uh, where we had the second youth peace ambassador workshop in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, uh, where I mentioned uh, to you yesterday in the presentation, uh, we had a, a delegation of six uh, people from the Philippines, and uh, very active youth, and uh, they've gone on. Uh, we heard before AR uh, from Chris, who is from the uh, Youth Looking Beyond Disaster, the second meeting, and the Youth Peace Action Ambassador as well. So, also, uh, as I mentioned, his action plan was uh, in the second Youth Peace Ambassador workshop, a strong partner was at UNESCO, uh, in, uh, and at uh, that time I was UNESCO regional advisor as well. And therefore the linkage of a youth uh, proposing to establish UNESCO network clubs across the Philippines and uh, Professor uh, Angelica uh, then uh, responded very quickly and through that we came and we launched the UNESCO club in Japan. Now that club is not uh, so active now, but it is a great opportunity for you to reactivate. And one of the outputs from today, uh, we will have uh, several groups of MAP people presenting now, their draft. We will then be uh, listening to other presentations, drafts, uh, and then through the afternoon, we'll be at the end presenting final synopsis of action plans that are more, that are more articulated based on the collective wisdom of everybody here. Uh, and you may or may not believe it, uh, when they presented their first draft action plan in Phnom Penh, uh, there were still a lot of improvements to be made. Yeah. And uh, that's the idea of uh, being able to learn. That if we learn from our experiences and we're happy to take uh, lessons on board, we can develop a lot. And uh, I should also inform you that uh, when I established, uh, so I left UNESCO at the end of February 2013. Two weeks later, I established and licensed the university in the United States, American University of Sovereign Nations, uh, ready to fill a gap. And AUSN is a member of what's called the United Nations Academic Impact. And the YPA program and LPD program are part of this. So we still have a linkage to the UN. Uh, but the linkage is much broader. Now, who is the United Nations? You. We, the peoples of the world. That's the UN Charter in 1945. It doesn't say, we the nations, we the national commissions of UNESCO, we the executive office of the president, we the congress of our people. It says we the peoples. So the answer again is, you are the people of the world. You need to take initiative. And that's a theme we repeated in the last couple of days. So when these people in this video took initiative, when Chris takes initiative, we're inspiring you to take initiative. So if you want to take initiative, then uh, join our programs. Now if you are happy to support, please support. There are all sorts of roles and things. So 
they needed somebody to make the boats, somebody to make the bags, somebody to rich enough to donate the money, uh, social media people, a whole team. Okay, so this is the teamwork is also very important. Uh, so I'd like to commend uh, AR and Chris for their presentations. And please do not be uh, shy or embarrassed if your first uh, presentation is uh, not so slick as them. Okay? Uh, because uh, they, had three revisions they had three revisions in the development of our action plan in Nanpen, and they uh, have many since. But they've been working in it, and that's become their career. So they decided to make a career out of community service and serving the, the world. Okay, so this is what we're trying to do, is create spaces, uh, because our society does let a lot of people fall through the cracks. Can you imagine kids having to swim to school, to walk in mud? Okay? Okay? And probably you can, because some of you come from distant parts of the country. But uh, much of the world cannot. Even in the rich countries, we have people who cannot uh, access what uh, it appears we should take for granted. So I'd like to uh, uh, ask, uh, or give AR a chance to say anything more, and we'd like to have our uh, three sets of map presentations. And uh, we hope that will inspire more map presentations, so by the end of the day, we should have more. And the way to learn action plan is to present. And uh, please, uh, uh, everyone, suggest ideas. I'll be very participatory. Uh, because uh, AI mentioned and he asked us all, uh, do you have a brain? Okay. I said, I don't have a brain. Because uh, I'm a bit more animistic, I believe the whole of my soul, my energy, and my spirit is across the whole organism of myself and all the creatures around me. So together, that passion to transform the world is not coming just from the, uh, the trillions of neurons and the networks in my brain. It is a social network that is created through our evolution. So my brain is not in my body. My brain is peripheral. It is a social construct of all the interactions I have. So that is uh, my image of neurology and psychology, that my brain, my ideas, are coming from social constructs. So that may explain the answer, okay? So as a molecular biologist, a PhD in molecular biology, looking at DNA, that my concept is all the networking that forms us. And that's why uh, we can create much greater capacity but it also means those kids swimming and those kids who are dying of hunger now, one bite, one bite, one bite. Every two seconds okay, for hunger. Every three seconds for bad policy in the world. These are part of my network too. And that's what motivates us to our responsibility to our fellow, uh, fellow people. My network is dying, that new parts are being born. So we need to bring those together. So thank you very much, Aya. Great job. I just want to add, uh, the, UNESCO, uh, the UNESCO clubs are, is now the uh, recognized arm of the UNESCO National Commission for the Philippines under the Department of Foreign Affairs. And yesterday, they had a meeting with the Foreign Minister, Professor Yasai. And yeah, they're doing really great now. So. And now I am, my hands are a bit free to do other things. So that's uh, having a box, bring out of it and do, having another box for other people. So um, thank you. And just uh, to end, um, in, my, in my observation, with all the workshops, with all the conferences I attended here in abroad, the world does not lack people who has good ideas. 
good ideas are time a dozen. What the world lacks are people who translate those ideas into actions. So the positive change doesn't happen here in this conference. It happens what do you, you do outside, what do you do next after this. So thank you again.